tonight. If you had your Bibles, John, the 8th chapter, 31st through the 37th verse, it said, Then Jesus said unto the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, when, then you are my disciples indeed. And he said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered to him, Well, Abraham's seed, and we are never bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever, and that the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are, uh, that I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I don't know about you, but I want to have his word have a place in my life, don't you? I don't want to be no ways, uh, as the old black sister used to say in the old spirituals, she used to say, I ain't no ways tired. And that's the way I don't want to be. I don't want to be tired of worshiping the Lord. I don't want to be tired calling on his name because the reason I'm here tonight is he set me free. Is that old song we used to sing as a kid. And so today we live in a day where as Abraham... I thought about him, uh, he talked about freedom, and we talk about freedom because we're Americans. We have a right tonight to enter into this sanctuary. Uh, there's no civil right, liberty, uh, uh, or anything that can stop us from doing that right now. I mean, I know they're working on things, and they're trying to crimp our worship. They're trying to crimp our right to have church, even during the COVID. They tried to tell us that we weren't essential but how many knows the church is the most central thing there is? And I thought, you know, we're here to believe God. And you can choose to believe whatever you want to believe. But as Americans, we have a right to speak our mind on any issue we choose because we are Americans. And we have the right to carry our Bible. We have the right to pray in Jesus' name and to serve Him in this present world that we live. And did you know it's impossible to be an American and still not be, it's, it's possible to be an American and still not be free. And what I mean by that, we can be free in our citizenship, but not free in our spirit. We can have things that's got us bound and held us captive. And even though we're free in, in, uh, as an American, but we're not free as a, as a human being. We all have the rights to uh, guarantee ourselves to enjoy our society that we live in, but we can be bound spiritually. I can remember the day he came to my house, and Brother Roy, he opened my prison door, and he set me free. You see, in these verses that we just read, Jesus is speaking to a group of people, and he's also uh, talking about the sons of Abraham. They enjoyed spiritual freedom. Jesus lets them know that they were sinners on they had things in their life that wasn't right. And the same truth repeated by Paul in Romans 6 and 16. Jesus also wants every audience of the church to be listening in this day as well as other days that we have power as men and women to truly be free. I want to have, take my liberty tonight because I have a freedom to do so. I want to lift my hands unto a holy God. I want to praise his name because he's done marvelous things. You may come in, your body may not feel well tonight, but can you know just a few minutes of prayer and you can leave this old house set free by bondage? Yes, you can. I thought, you know, you see a person can be locked away in prison and still be free in Jesus. You know, when I was a chaplain, I did some chaplain work in the prison. And some of them men, now they weren't in there for running the halls. I want you to understand that. They had done some terrible things. But they had found Christ in the prison. Even though they were behind bars, they were free in their spirit because God had came in their lives and touched them. And so as us tonight, we're not in a prison house saved by bars, but sometimes we can be in a prison house by other things. I appreciate him tonight that that word, free indeed, I appreciate him, don't you? That he set me free. He put my uh, feet on a rock, established my goings, 
And you know, the truth about it is, this word refers to that which is true respect to God and the execution of his purposes in Jesus Christ. You know, now, I can remember, uh, not on this very campground, I can remember we used to shout, we praise the Lord. And I thought, you know, we need a time to come back to that, to, to have that freedom. That there's nobody stops me from praising him. Now, if I got to pull this wagon, I'm going to try my best to get it up under that harness here. like he carried it on and on and on and I could almost hear God saying man if you just care, if you just ask me I'd get under that yoke with you I'll pull that you see the heavens declare the glory of God and the firm that show up his handiwork day by day the utter the speech and tonight he showed his knowledge you see you ever wanted to know things ask God he's full of wisdom he's full of mercy tonight you see, the line's been drawn. I don't know about you, but it's time to come back with the worship of God. Why? Because we're free to do so. I don't want to wait till they come and tell me I can't go to church. I want to worship him while I'm in freedom to do so. I wonder, when I thought about Daniel, remember him? He was going to pray. They had made a decree, and they were watching. They wanted to see what Daniel did. Well, Daniel just opened the window, prayed toward Jerusalem like he'd never prayed before. Why? Because he was free, and he knew he was. Hallelujah. How many knows the tabernacle? I see that sun shine, and I, I was thinking, man, it's been a beautiful day. It's been a beautiful day, but what would cap it off is to enter in to the presence of the Lord tonight and to honor him with our worship, to honor him with our lives. Hallelujah. You see, we all know that the bridegroom cometh into his chamber. He rejoices as a strong man runs a race. And I thought about for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, against all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. But because that which we have known is manifest for them, for God has showed it unto them. You know, God is making himself known to men today. He is through his word, through his tabernacle. And I thought about tonight when they were singing them songs about he is a God of mercy. He's a God to be worshipped. He's a God to be adored. And I thought tonight, uh, glorify him not as just a, a mere God, but he is the God. He's We're thankful because we can tear down the vain imagination and their foolish heart that was darkened. Now, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I remember in Kentucky, they had this group, and they were called the mighty men or the strong men, they called them, and they were breaking handcuffs, and they were doing all these marvelous things, but that wasn't the strong men that God was talking about. He's talking about people like the sons of thunder and how they were working for God. Hallelujah. Let's be singing Jesus in spirit. Hallelujah. The truth about Jesus, he is found in our closet, in our gospel message. For I delivered on you, first of all, that which I received, and how that Christ died for our sins, according to his righteousness, into the scriptures. He was buried. He was resurrected. And on the third day, according to the scriptures, who was delivered for our offense was raised for our justification. You see, I'm justified tonight. Justified in every sin. God took care of that. You see, you search the scriptures, for in them you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Where were you? Where were you when the things uh, that are going on in this world, the truth about Jesus is revealed to the sinner by the Holy Spirit as he opens the eyes of the blind and guides them to the light. That's why they sung that old song, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I've traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Aren't you glad he showed that light to you? I'm glad he showed it to me. Now, when we think 
of the spirit of truth, and it's come. It's here. He guides us into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. And he will show you mighty things to come. No man come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Did you know a lot of people get the idea they can come to God anytime they want to? That's not so. That's not so. You have to be drawn to the Lord. I don't always have an audience. You know, I think about the queen and the kings. There was a special thing about coming into their audience. But I want to tell you, if the Spirit of God doesn't draw you, watch out. Watch out. But I'm glad that he's a source of freedom in Christ alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You see, the source of our freedom, think about that. Is our spiritual walk with God. We got his word with us every day. We can read it. We go in our prayer closet. There's freedom there to intercede with him. And how many knows in the midnight hour, there's sometimes when everybody's sleeping, God's come by the bedside. And he'll talk to us. And he'll reason with us. The truth about Jesus Christ, church, is he's all sin. He's all around so that the lost sinner will be without excuse. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, you talk to people, you say, are you a Christian? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've been a Christian a long time. And I said, well, I guess you go to church quite regularly then, right? Oh, I haven't been in seven years. And I said, what? Well, you, you say you're saved, but you don't attend his house? I'm glad that I, when he saved me, he gave me a desire that I wanted to be in his presence. I wanted to be amongst the saints of God so I could clap my hands, so I could praise his holy name. Because why? He set me free. I, oh, I heard a few amens right Woo. there. Praise the Lord. I appreciate him, don't you? You see, there's no speech, no language, no voice unheard. The line's been gone out to the earth. He sends it out. And I thought the bridegroom's coming, church. Do we know that? It's not going to be long. He's going to step out on the portals of glory. But I'm glad that I'm free tonight. And I know the truth. He ain't going to judge me by any church body. He's going to judge me by the word of God. Right here that I hold in my hand. You see, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. It's against all ungodliness. All these things. As, as Brother Isaac was sharing about that Catholic church and the victory they were given, nine to zero, there's still people have a conscience. There's still people realize today that things aren't right. When they go against the Bible, you're going the wrong direction. I thought about the eternal Godhead, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You see, that I knew him. I'm thankful that he tears down vain imaginations. And, I, and there was people's foolish heart is darkened. I was uh, listening to some folks that the other day at work. You hear a lot of conversation go forth. And I think, oh, Lord, I wish they would know you in the power of his resurrection like I know you. How many knows there's a scope of freedom tonight? You know, it's a great feeling when you go down and lay your head down on the pillow Did you know that? I can remember a day when I laid my head down on the pillow and I had some questions. But I'm thankful that night that he heard me pray and he set me free and he gave me liberty. How many knows there's liberty in the Lord when we worship him? He's the one who is freeborn. Jesus says that he gives us freedom. And if we never, never begin with, if we never had freedom of God, the liberty that he gives us is so complete. It's a complete liberty. I mean, when you stand and see a storm come, and I'm not just talking all about a physical storm of lightning and thunder. I'm talking about storms that come to our life. And we know that God has set us free. And that no matter what you face, he's going to take care of us. I appreciate God for his freedom. You see, I thought about where he said, we've delivered, you've been delivered from the wrath of God. Did you know that? We don't have to worry about the wrath of God because he's going to come get you. He 
he's going to take us out of here before that hour. Now, I hear a lot of people saying, and I got to remember, there was an old class preacher I remember. They were up talking about when the rapture is going to come. And, and some are saying, well, it's going to be after the tribulation. It's going to be after this. And that man just jumped up. He said, dead bird, dead bird. <laughs> but he, he had a little authority because he was up in age, had some gray hair. He had walked with God a little while. And when they started out, he just said, dead bird, dead bird. God's coming before them. How many knows he could come before night? He could come before morning. Yes, he could. How many knows he's delivered us from condemnation? Aren't you glad for that? When you think about what you used to be, and now you know I'm no longer that person, and you have that perfect liberty in the law of Christ, there's no condemnation on them. We've been delivered from death and hell, church. We've been delivered from the power of sin. Hallelujah. You know, I heard a story, and I, 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 I thought, man, that must have been a magnificent move of God when Brother Dillon was in a band here in Concert. I've never been to concerts, per se, in that magnitude. But they're talking about the, the, the length of that music and how loud it was. And that man's made a statement that not even God could say it. say who I want to. I can deliver who I want to. You see, if God wants to save you, there ain't nothing can keep you from it. If God wants to take you, there ain't nothing can keep you from going in. I remember when my dad was dying and I was worried about him because I wasn't sure. I wanted to make sure he was right. A little Baptist preacher, and I never forget his advice. He told me, oh, Fort Dent, he said, I've been thinking about you and your dad. He said, let me give you a piece of advice. I said, okay, I'm ready. He said, you know what? If God is ready for your dad, he said, you're going to stay in the world. He said, but if God's ready for your dad, he said, I'm going to keep him from going. He said, but it's all in God's hands. How many knows God gave my dad 17 long years to think about his soul? And he did make heaven his home. And if I hold on a little while longer, I'm going to get to be in that again. I'm looking forward to that. You see, we've been delivered also from the power of Satan. I mean, he knows he has no power over us. Oh, he may grumble. He may uh, holler about things. He's even come and told me, you ain't going to make it to heaven while you struggle to go. But I got news for him. I am going to make it because I've been set free by the liberty of God, and I will be there. You see, deliverance we enjoy in Jesus is complete and full. I thought about that old song, joy and joy. And that's what it is. It's full of glory. For the law of the Spirit of Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith God has made us free, and be not entangled in the yoke of bondage. But you know, we can only allow ourselves to get into bondage if we don't watch ourselves. We don't keep ourselves prayed up. I thought about the source of our freedom in Jesus alone. Our freedom. The freedom we enjoy as Americans. It wasn't cheap. Did you know that? I heard people act like, well, you know, it didn't cost much. Ask that man that comes and beats his leg to the whole car. Where a, where a one of the weapons went off and he was trying to get us our freedom. Tell him it was cost free. It cost him a lot. Look at those men that's lost members. Why they lose members? Because they were fighting for our freedom to give us the reason of a hope to praise the Lord, to worship Him. Our freedom costs much. It's not free. It costs a lot. When they wrote that Declaration of Independence and those five signers captured by the British traitors and tortured before they died, 12 had their homes ransacked, burned. Two lost their sons in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 that fought and died for the wounds and the hardships of the Revolutionary War for our freedom. Hallelujah. I commend our soldiers for giving. For some of them gave the ultimate sacrifice. Some are with the Lord even now because it cost them something. What kind of men were they? These 24 lawyers. When I think about them, what kind of, they were 
jurors, some of them were. Some of them were merchants. Some of them were farmers. Some of them were great big plantation owners. Men of means. They were educated. But they signed the Declaration of Independence knowing full well that they, the, the penalty of death if they were captured. It's going to cost you something, sir. This is not going to be pretty. I want to say this. They signed and pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Uh, there was a man named Carter Braxton of Virginia, a wealthy planter, a trader. He saw his ship sunk by the British Navy. He sold his home and property to pay his debts. Uh, he, he, he did all these things to keep uh, his home going, the Battle of the Yorktown, the British general, Cornwalls had taken over Thomas Nelson's home for where it was destroyed, and he died bankrupt. Their children fled for their lives. His fields and his meal were returning home to find his wife dead and to find his children banished. A few weeks later, he died from exhaustion. I want to tell you something. Freedom costs something. It costs something. Yes, it does. So we hear these stories. Our freedom as Americans was purchased at a very high cost when our Lord hung on an old rugged cross and he stretched out for you and I and when they were hollering, won't you save yourself and all the others but he paid that penalty for you and I, church church, we have freedom we have liberty in our Lord tonight I appreciate him hallelujah, hallelujah aren't you thankful for the liberty that God has given us. Praise God. Why don't we stand to our feet tonight? Hallelujah. Why don't we give him a good praise? Why don't we worship him right where we stand? Lord, I thank you for your freedom. Lord, I thank you for liberty. I thank you, Lord, for the price you paid on old Mount Calvary. For you, Lord, did it all for us. And God, I ask you to bless each one of this congregation. Oh, hallelujah. God, you did it for them as well. Gave them the precious penalty of freedom, God. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Sherry, if you come, just get a good worship song. Hallelujah. Whatever's on your heart. These altars are open. I'd like for us to take a few moments tonight before we dismiss. Why don't we give God our praise. Why don't we give God a good thanks for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we appreciate you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, for your paid cost. For you and I. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you, God.